Hello everyone, and welcome again. In this video, I explain to you setup VPN server on Windows Server 2019, which is a virtual private network, or as it is called VPN, and is a convenient method to allow users, to access resources using an encrypted connection, from a remote location, and through the internet. Typically, organizations use VPN to extend their private network, to allow employees to work from home, or another remote location to access files, apps, internet websites, printers, and other resources through a public network, as if they were directly connected into the company's network. I will explain to you step by step, how to install and configure the VPN server setup, on Windows Server 2019, and the first thing you need to do is add the VPN role feature, on Windows Server, so open the Server Manager dashboard. After opening the Server Manager dashboard window, click on, Add Roles and Features. To add a VPN role feature, to this server. On the Before You Begin page, click Next. In the Installation Type step, select Role Based or Feature Based. And click the Next button to continue. Here, select the server on which you will add the VPN role feature, in case you have more than one server, and click the Next button to continue. In this step, select the server role you want to add. Select Remote Access. And click the Next button to continue. Here you don't have to select or adjust features. Immediately click Next, to continue. Here you will see a description of the remote access role. Click on Next, to continue. In Role Services, select Direct Access and VPN, and a pop-up window will appear. Click on Add Features. Also select the Routing option, and click Next. To move to the next step. Click on Next. Then the Next, without changing any settings. Finally, click on Install. The installation itself takes a few minutes, to wait until the VPN role feature is finished. After completing the installation and adding the VPN role feature, do not close the confirmation screen after installation, but click on Open the Getting Started wizard. The Configure Remote Access window will open, but before proceeding with the wizard, it is useful to first open the necessary ports, in your firewall otherwise, you will get an error after going through this wizard. This step is very important. So click on the search tab and type Windows Defender Firewall, with advanced security. And from the search results open it, in order to open the necessary ports, in the firewall. After opening the Windows Firewall, click on Inbound Rules, on the left side, then search for the rule. Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol SSTPN. Then right-click on the rule, and select Enable Rule. After enabling it, you can close Windows Defender Firewall, with advanced security. Now we will return to the Configure Remote Access window, click on the Deploy VPN Only option. This will open the Routing, and Remote Access Management Console. You can now close any other open windows. Now on the left side, right-click on the name of your VPS, and click on Configure and Enable Routing, and Remote Access. In the Remote Access Server Setup Wizard, click Next. Here select the Custom Configuration option, this gives you the option, to configure the VPN server specifically instead, of installing services you don't need. And click Next. Then, select VPN Access, and Net, and click Next. Then click on the Finish button, to complete the configuration. Finally, you will be given the option to start your VPN server. Click here on Start Service. And wait until the VPN service, has finished starting. It will only take a few seconds for the VPN service to start. After that we will configure the connection settings for the VPN service. The next step is to make some settings on the VPN server. Right click on the VPN server, and select Properties. In the General tab, check the IPv4, router with the LAN, and demand dial routing option selected. And the IPv4, remote access server option also selected. Then, click on the IPv4 tab, and at the bottom, select the static address pool option. And then click the add button. Here, write the IP address that the user will receive, when he connects to the VPN server. You can add a range of two IP addresses where you can create more than one user on the server. 
This will specify 11 IP addresses, from which the user will obtain an IP when connecting to the VPN server. After that, click on the OK button. Then, click on the Apply button, then OK, then Expand IPv4, then right-click on NAT, and from the menu, select New Interface. And in the New Interface for Network Address Translation window, double-click on the server's Ethernet. Then, select the Public Interface Connected to the Internet option, so you can connect to the VPN server over the Internet. Then, select Enable NAT on this interface, to send and receive data. Then click on the Apply button, and then OK. Next, double-click on the Ethernet, that was just added, then click on the Services and Ports tab. Then select IP Security IK, then select Adjust the Private Address Value, to the address 127.0.0.1, and click the OK button. In the same way, select IP Security, ICNA Traversal and set the private address to the IP address 127.0.0.1 and click the OK button. In the same way, select the options Remote Desktop, Secure Web Server, VPN Gateway L2TP slash IP Seconds, running on this server, and VPN Gateway PPTP, and Web Server HTTP, and set the private address to the IP address 127.0.0.1. I will leave you all the options that you will select, in the video description, after that click on the apply button and then OK. Finally, restart the RRS, right click on your VPN server, and from the menu select all tasks. And then select restart. The routing and remote access console, will now be restarted in order to save the changes you made to the VPN server. And it will take a few seconds. After that, I will move to the next step, which is how to create and allow users, to connect to the VPN server. If you click on the remote access client, you will not find any connection from any user now. And to create VPN users, click on the server manager dashboard, then click on the tools menu, at the top of the page, then select active directory users and computers. Then, create a new organizational unit in the field, and give it a suitable name for its work. Also, any user you can give access to the VPN server. Then create a user in the organizational unit that was just created, for example I will name it VPN test, and click the next button. Then give a password, uncheck user must change password at next logo, and select both user can't change password, and password never expires, then click on the next button, and finally click on finish. The next step is to give this user access, and connection to the VPN server that we created. Right click on the user, and select properties. From the user properties window, click on the member of tab, then click on the add button, then advanced button. Click on the find now button, and search for a group called, remote desktop users group, select it, and click on the ok button. After adding the user to the remote desktop users group, click ok, then apply. After that, click on the dial in tab, and under the network access permission section, check the option allow access until this user is allowed to access the VPN server. Then click on the apply button, then OK thus. The final step remains, which is to open any other computer, and try connecting to the VPN server on this server. This computer is running Windows 10, and is connected to the internet. Right click on the network icon from the taskbar, and select open network and internet settings. After opening network settings, click on VPN from the left menu, then, click on add a VPN connection, to create a connection to the server. The add VPN connection screen will appear. Enter the details. First, in the VPN provider option, select Windows, built in, and it is installed on it. In the connection name field, give an appropriate name. Let it be, for example, a VPN connection. In the server name, or address field, it is best to enter the server's IP address. Here I will write a local IP this is for testing only, but in reality you must enter the real IP, in order to be able to connect to the VPN server, through the internet. Consider using the real IP on the server, and also entering it in this field. In the VPN type field, you can select normal, or secure socket tunneling protocol SSTP, because we have enabled this service, through the Windows firewall. It will work with you in both cases. 
if you encounter any problem while connecting to the VPN server. Select the Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol SSTP option. Then leave the username and password so that they are not kept. As a form of security, to maintain data security, you will enter them while connecting to the VPN server. After that click on the Save button. A VPN connection icon will be created. Click on it. And click on the Connect button. Then you will be asked to enter your username and password. Enter them and click the OK button, and it will immediately connect to the VPN network that we created on the server running the Windows Server 2019 operating system. The VPN server has already been connected successfully and without any problem. You can now work on the same network because the connection gave you an IP address on the same network that you connected to. To ensure that the connection has been made, open the server again. Then open the Routing and Remote Access Console window, right-click on the server, and select Refresh. Then select Remote Access Client, to find out which client is currently connected to the VPN server. Indeed, there is a connection from the VPN test user, and thus the connection was completed successfully. You can create more than one user, to connect to the VPN server, or use any user you have already created, and give him the same permissions to connect. Now that your VPN connection is working, you have done all the steps successfully. And the VPN connection is strong with the firewall. You can use and create a VPN server on your network safely. I hope the video is useful to you. I apologize for the many steps. And thank you for watching. I also hope you subscribe to my channel. Thank you all.